Mr. President, Excellencies, two days ago, in the newly agreed Pact for the Future, world leaders reaffirmed their commitment to international law and to the Charter of the United Nations. Our organization is based on the principle of sovereignty of all member states within their internationally recognized borders. The Charter unequivocally stipulates that all states must refrain from the threat or use of force against the territorial integrity or political independence of any other state, and that international disputes must be settled by peaceful means. Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February 2022, following the illegal annexation of the Autonomous Republic of Crimea and city of Sevastopol a decade ago, is a clear violation of these principles. And civilian populations continue to pay the price. The death toll keep rising. Nearly 10 million people have fled their homes. Systematic attacks against hospitals, schools, supermarkets are only adding pain and misery. Power cuts and infrastructure damage have left millions in the dark. I strongly condemn all attacks on civilians and civilian facilities wherever they occur and whoever is responsible. They all must stop immediately. And I remain deeply concerned about the safety, humanitarian needs, and basic human rights of people residing in occupied areas. Mr. President, despite immense challenges, the United Nations remains fully engaged as the largest international presence in Ukraine. This year alone, and together with our partners, we have provided life-saving aid to more than 6.2 to 6 .2 million people. But we need the support of the international community. 15 million people in Ukraine require humanitarian assistance, more than half of them women and girls. But as winter is approaching, less than half of our 2024 humanitarian response plan is funded. I urge donors to help us pursue our vital work on the ground. We are also assisting the government of Ukraine in its recovery and reconstruction efforts. This includes access to basic services and the restoration of Ukraine's energy production capacities. In recent weeks, we have seen a resurgence of inflammatory rhetoric and incidents around nuclear sites, particularly at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant and, alarmingly, at the Kursk nuclear power plant in the Russian Federation. I commend the International Atomic Energy Agency, including its critical presence in Ukraine's nuclear sites, to help ensure nuclear safety and security. And I urge all parties to act responsibly and avoid any declaration or action that could further destabilize an already incendiary situation. Monsieur le Président. President, two and a half years since the full-blown invasion of Ukraine, more than 11,000 civilians have been killed. The longer this tragic war continues, the greater the risk of escalation and spillover. This would not only impact the region, but further deepen global tensions and divisions at a time when our world desperately needs more cooperation and collective action. We must stop the suffering and break the cycle of violence for the sake of the people of Ukraine, the people of Russia and the world. The Black Sea Initiative and the continued exchange, exchanges of prisoners of war serve as reminders that when there is political will, diplomacy can succeed, even in the darkest hour. Today, though the prospects for peace may seem distant, I am inspired by the growing calls for dialogue. So let us intensify our efforts to seek peace in Ukraine, a just, comprehensive and sustainable peace in line with the United Nations Charter, international law, and the resolutions of the General Assembly. The United Nations stands ready to support all efforts towards achieving that goal. Thank you.